Welcome to Dolly into Meaning, Camera Moves That Move You, where we pull back the curtain on how filmmakers create meaning and feeling by moving the camera. Today we are checking out the original 1993 Jurassic Park. I'll be giving you the time codes of each shot we're going over so you can get more context by renting, streaming, or buying the film. Here we go. For our first shot, let's not forget that for first time audiences of Jurassic Park, they know there are a lot of dinosaurs, but they don't know where the dinosaurs come from. So we start our shot here in a cave at an underground dig site. Someone has just discovered an amber with something inside. In this moment, everyone is called over. Muchachos, let me loose. Hey, why not? Notice the aesthetically pleasing lines these headlights are making. The one on the left of frame crosses the other parallel lines. Only one of them appears to light up the amber. This would be a place where everyone is pre-blocked out and everyone there and their lights find their mark, a set place to look or stand. We first push in on Rastagno. Because Grant's like me. He's a digger. <laughs> but then we pass him to finish on the amber and the mosquito inside. This new detail revealed by the push-in is a big mystery. The music in the Dolly Inn is saying, this is important. Something notable is happening here. Que lindo eres. It's like a big highlighter coloring in a word. But for the first time audiences, we don't know what it means yet. It's a perfect exposition move. A perfect move for a first act. Essentially, this shot is a promise to audiences. Trust us. Continue watching and we will explain why this is important later. Despite Steven Spielberg being in the editor's union, he really likes long takes where we don't cut for a while, but instead dolly or steady cam to different marks. And this shot is an example of this. What's hard about doing this is you need to spoon feed to the audience where their attention should be at all times and keep them interested in what is going on in frame, even if things happen slowly. At first, curiosity supported by motion directs our attention. A question, a mystery of who is in the car, is taking up the left third of frame. It's also the larger section of frame that is moving. When Dogson gets out of the car, motion now also helps direct our attention. The waiter is moving on the right side of frame, but minimally. It would have been natural for the waiter to leave the way he came in, but he goes out the way that takes up the smallest amount of frame real estate, into the background. Now a narrative grabs the audience. Even within this shot, a mini narrative is created for 10 seconds. At first it's different and unique and interesting but that he leaves the door open, what a jerk. But then we want to see how the driver reacts. In fact, that is where our attention is as the driver walks to close the door. Instead of dolling into the bag, Spielberg has Dodson come to camera. He and the bag get bigger as they get closer until he's no longer there and the bag itself is the biggest thing in frame. This coupled with the other way Spielberg directs our attention tells the audience the bag is important. I also wanted to point out the driver gets out of the car well before Dodson chooses to leave the door open. But with the driver being blocked by the car, we the audience don't really notice. It's okay for there to be unnatural character actions when it doesn't occupy the audience's attention. The driver insults him with a sign and then immediately Dodson cuts off our view of him. Our attention immediately goes to the bag, which is in the same part of the frame as the driver was. The bag turns, making something that once so small and further back in frame, closer and now very big and wide. Spielberg is putting our attention on it for a long time here to tell us this is important. But we don't know why yet. And again, it's an expositional mystery, but it's at the beginning of the scene and we'll find out the answer later. Now we go to a cowboy angle where we can see his legs to his head the look really draws our attention to his face. But now something in the foreground pops up. It's a market and it's out of focus. We really aren't supposed to be paying attention to that. But through the market we can see Dodgson continue to look side to side. He's secretive about something. Why do this in a one shot? It's harder so funner for the audience and possibly the director. What's great is that this one shot doesn't draw attention to itself. Which is a danger with long takes. It serves the story very well. In this shot, Grant is learning about how they are making dinosaurs. At first, the Dalian reinforces his expression of amazement. 
And sometimes animals that went extinct millions of years ago, like dinosaurs. The emotion the character is expressing in a dolly in shot is often and what the dolly is shot is highlighting. At the beginning of the shot, we can hardly see Grant's face because of the projector light blocking our view. Grant is elevated above the ground in his seat, and Spielberg chose to not elevate the dolly. So when we push in on, we aren't looking up at him at an even steeper angle, and his head blocks the blinding light, allowing us to see him. We tilt up also. But the push-in slows and comes to a stop, leaving us a moment with Grant and just his expression. Now that we stop, his eyes start to move, back and forth, as if they are reading. That's what this whole sequence is about. They are learning just as we, the audience, are learning how they created dinosaurs. Normally in a dolly -in, the push-in is the rising action, and then the dolly stops to reveal the climax. Here, the climax is a verb. We are learning. It doesn't stop anything, but it shows that the learning is continuing, but perhaps on a more excited level. How do you put the audience's attention on the words said through an intercom speaker without actually cutting to a boring, stereotypical shot of the speaker itself? Let's see how Spielberg does it. I think this shot especially shows the planning that goes on on making a movie, because that intercom voice isn't there on the day. They plan for this moment. We start looking at a computer, and then immediately when the computer screen becomes hard to see, we speed up across the frame to see them coming into the lab. But it then slows down again as we come to the stairs. Speeding or slowing down at a steady cam or dolly move helps direct our attention or create meaning. Our attention is split between them and Samuel Jackson's voice as it comes in on the speaker about the docks. That's the boat Nedry needs to get to to get off the island. Hammond doesn't even hint that Wu is there until we see him in frame. Hey, Hammond. The feeling throughout these scenes is amazement as we learn how these scientists clone dinosaurs. The feeling has been long going, and that's not a bad thing. In fact, I find it impressive that we've been entertained while playing the same feeling for so long. But now it's time for something different, and these shots show the turn from an amazement to worry. The first building block for this change is on Malcolm. As Malcolm questions that Hammond can control nature like he is trying to do, we slowly dolly in on him. Hampton is. Uh... It's not possible. Listen, there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us. It's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free. It expands to new territories and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but... Uh, well, there it is. This is the major theme of the story. It is important. The push and stops at the very end of the shot because the feeling doesn't immediately carry to the next shots. Hammond and Wu shut down the argument temporarily. There it is. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? And this is the big moment, when we change from amazement to worry slash fear. The dolly is on a curved track, and Grant is looking out, thinking about something. When he turns to look at someone, he's found the thought that he was looking for, and you can see by the look in his eyes, he is now worried. You bred raptors. The camera turning shows Grant and the audience turning the corner from amazement to fear. Now, why was this not done on a conventional push-in? I think the curve track highlights the pivot better, while the pushing in emphasizes the rising action that finally tips the scales. Part of Spielberg's style is keeping things in frame and not cutting. It makes things feel like things are happening in world. And although it doesn't always add a feeling or meaning to the shot, it does add a taste to the film that makes it feel distinctly Spielbergian. We'll start on the shot before. Two million. Yeah. Elle's motion to turn back motivates the cut. A motivated cut means it's a smooth transition to the other shot. It's not always necessary that cuts be motivated, but it helps. Then we get a different angle of Hammond and Maldoon. This is a slow dolly in on Hammond as he makes the request. I wonder if perhaps you would be good enough to take a gas jeep. And bring back my grandchildren. The intensity, the rising tension that the dolly in creates isn't because of an internal feeling. It's the rising tension of the plot. It's what the audience is feeling. It doesn't appear that Hammond is worried and is gathering the courage to ask the question. It's all for the audience. Sometimes dolly ins are for the audience and sometimes they are for the internal feelings of the character. Now it's time for the last shot I'm featuring, where we do something a little bit different. It's your turn to tell us in the comments section what you think it's about. You're going to practice thinking like a director. Don't read the comments first. Try this on your own before peeking in on the answers of others. 
If you can, watch the surrounding scene yourself. What dialogue prompts the camera to start and stop moving? What does this sort of crane out move mean? What part of the scene is it? Guess we'll just have to evolve too. What do you call a blind dinosaur? I don't know. What do you call a blind dinosaur? Thanks again for watching Dolly into Meaning on Jurassic Park. Subscribe and hit the notifications button. Check out the community or about section to see what movies I'm going to do next and maybe get them or watch them ahead of time. Got some constructive feedback or suggestion of what movie I should do next? Use the comments section. See you next time. Thanks.